Hey everyone, welcome to the devlog, where you will be following along with me as I work on one of my projects. Now, on this video, I'm going to be time traveling and working on a site that I haven't updated in three years. Now, this is going to be painful, probably, but let's dive in and see what's going on. Okay, so what is this prehistoric site that I keep talking about? It's this one right here. It's called Dev News short for developer news and it's a news aggregator for three different news sources centered around tech or developer news and so these three main news sources are hacker news github trending repositories and product hunt and it's really basic the design is very simple um, it's just a list of links and i also link to whoever posted the topic uh, the comments on it and you can also go to the second page of Hacker News here if you want to continue reading. Um, GitHub Trending, I'll get back to that one in just one second. And then finally, Product Hunt, uh, lots of great marketing or business specific products here. Now, if I click on the GitHub tab, two hours later, you can see I'm not going to wait for it for too long because it's never going to finish loading. And so for GitHub Trending repositories, I wanted to grab this data, but GitHub doesn't offer an official API. So this is problematic because this means that I can't grab this data, um, but there's a workaround. I can crawl this page, get the source code, and then get this data that way by parsing through the markup uh, manually. So there's a service that I ended up using for this called Wrap API. And what this does is it lets you uh, select elements in a page and create an API out of the data that you extract out of that page. So a really useful service, honestly, and you can see here, um, actually was able to log into this account that I haven't seen for years. And there's this GitHub trending API that I made here. Um, yeah, skip tutorial, but this is supposed to grab this data. You can see, you can actually see um, the same page without the styling and repositories. It selects by a CSS selector. And this is the problem with crawling websites. If GitHub updates their markup, changes a class name and ID, then all of a sudden your crawler breaks. So you have to keep updating it. Um, now for a number of years, this worked perfectly fine. But of course, GitHub decided to mess with me. Um, no, they just wanted to update their site, their styling. So, you know, you should never depend on crawling. But that's what I was doing because there is no official API. So, yeah, Wrap API, it stayed up, it still works, actually uses for Product Hunt as well. But now this tab is broken and I've continued to use the site. I think this has been broken for like over a year. Um, I ended up, you know, I still found value in using Dev News every day because I still got Hacker News, I still got Product Hunt. Um, but it is now annoying again having to go to this trending page on GitHub. That is still not enough reason for me to fix it. I'm pretty lazy. But there's an issue that someone opened up on the GitHub repository because I actually open sourced this website. And someone commented uh, two days ago. So he said, thanks for creating this website. I open it every day, multiple times a day, maybe because I like to design a lot, somehow got addicted. Um, so that's awesome. That's actually why I use it as well. He continues to say, Unfortunately, the GitHub trending tab throws an error when it tries to load. I think it's because some breaking change from the GitHub API. Uh, he said he actually tried to fix it himself last year, which is awesome. Uh, I actually didn't know someone, one, was using the website besides myself. I mean, there's analytics. I know that people visit it. Um, but it's nice to see someone actually posting that's them saying, hey, I actually use this website. Uh, and I did respond. I said, hey, you know, feel free to fix it. I plan on using this trending API that I found that someone else built. Uh, so let's visit that really quick. So this API endpoint I can use to grab the repositories, the starred, the trending repositories. So my plan is to just simply update the site and have this tab use the new endpoint and hopefully that's pretty simple now i'm a developer i know that those are the last words that developers say before they run into an issue that takes them hours or days so this is the fun of it this is the fun of this video let's see 
Uh, one, if I can get this project working, because it is a very old project, it's a legacy project. And two, if I can implement this new API to fix this, fix this GitHub trending page and let this person know, let Alberto know that, hey, it's working, it's fixed. So yeah, um, let's jump into the code and see what we can do. I have the project open here and let's see if I can even get this installed. So if I open the terminal here, let's run npm install. And again, I don't know like if my npm version is correct. I have no idea if this is compatible, um, but let's see, I even have a build folder here. And so let me delete that just to make sure we're starting fresh. Now, while that installs, let's go ahead and dive through the code. Um, so at first, I wanna see how this is actually configured. Um, and my initial thought was this used Create React app because it's a simple, static, single page app. In actuality, this is configured manually with Webpack. And if I open uh, the package.json file here, search for Webpack, uh, so here it is. This is version one of Webpack. Now, I'm not gonna bother trying to upgrade that. I think they're on version like five or maybe six. So I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm not, not, I'm not going to upgrade any dependencies. But what I do want to do is at least uh, start the web server and see if we can start changing some of these files. <laughs> Okay, so the dependencies have been installed um, and I think I can just run npm start. Yeah, this runs the dev server. It's gonna be on port 3000. We got it running, it's actually running, that's awesome. Okay, so you can see um, these two tabs are working. GitHub is going to fail. But that's fine, we actually got the project running. I was not expecting that. Um, but let's, you know, let's not get too ahead of ourselves, let's not get too excited. Let's look at the file structure and see how easy it is. You know, four years ago, was I a good enough developer to build this in a maintainable way? Um, so there's a source folder, there's components in here, data, which I think is where I fetch uh, the data from the APIs. And then static, that's just static files, that's fine. Um, there's this HTML template here. We're not gonna need to touch that. All right, so let's jump into the components. Um, I'm expecting this to be in the news component. And you can see how this is old because it's using class syntax. Um, but I have state for every single tab here. Handle active tab. And I think this is actually where the data is fetched from. Yes, yeah, so there's this data directory. So actually this is pretty simple. Here is the <coughs> GitHub data fetcher. So in this case, you know, obviously we're going to swap out um, this URL here. And then the main thing that we're going to need is to make sure that we um, return data in the same format that the component expects. And if we can do that, honestly, this might work without too much changing of the components of you know the props and things like that. So this might be really easy, but again, I'm very um, hesitant to say that this is gonna be easy. So the first thing is we're going to replace this URL with that. Now, just for fun, let's save that and see what happens. So it compiled, let's reload. And if that worked, I would just be astounded. Um, cannot, read repo cannot read property repositories of undefined. So that's fine. Um, that's because this is actually on the root, it's an array. So I'm reading repositories here but actually I can remove that. And it might actually work this time. I'm not sure. 
Let's see. And there is actually hot reloading here, which is cool. So I don't think that worked. Undefined is not iterable. So it gets, I guess it's just response.body. Let's try that. And Kyle's asking me what I'm filming right now, so. Uh, let's see. We got some data. Check it out. So obviously this looks messed up, but go library for accessing GitHub API. Yeah, so that is right. Um, go, that's the language, number of stars. Yeah, so we actually got everything except the repo name. But what we need is the URL and the name. So let's do that. Ah, I see. So repo.url, that's actually the full URL. So we can just set that. And can I get the user? There is the name, which is repo.name. Can I also get the owner? Oh, the author. That's what I need. So this API is actually designed so well um, that I probably won't need to do much else. Maybe it will update. Oh, I see the problem. So this is actually, um, you can see when I reload and I click on GitHub, there's no loading indicator there. So that means it actually um, fetched it from local storage. So if I go to DevTools, um, go to local storage um, here, and Actually, I'm not sure where this data is. Because I would think it would be here in local storage. Maybe session storage? No. Index DB? Ah, uh, okay. So there's actually this local forage um, index DB database. So if I delete this. So now it fetches. Boom. Okay. This works. That's insane. There's no way. So if I click that, that works. Yep. That's that's insane. <laughs> that's insane. So um, I only had to do just a few things to get this to work. One is I just swapped out the URL. Um, the second thing is I had to grab the data from the root of the response. Um, so I, it wasn't you know nested inside of a data. Um, object and the repositories. That's how my API was. In this case, it's just an array. And then because I developed it this way where the data was just returning an object, um, you know, and I was mapping the Ajax response to my own object that I passed to the component, I was able to just simply change out the, the key names that I got from the response and, um, and it worked, that's it. And in this example, you can see how this pattern of normalizing the data um, allowed me to make a change to a completely different API and be able to get this to work with my front end components. So this is really cool. The next plan for me is to, um, is to deploy it. So let's go ahead and try to do that. Now, this is an old project, so I actually don't even have any continuous integration, continuous deployment system set up. I'm pretty sure this is hosted on Surge. Um, and I doubt that I even have this. I do have Surge somehow, okay. So let's look at search.sh and see if I can get this deployed. Oh, you know what? Let's check package, JSON. There's actually already a deploy uh, function here. So first, let me go ahead and run. Um, it's a pre-deploy, so I guess it runs before deploy. Run prod. Yeah, so hypothetically, this should deploy it out. Let's see if it does. 
No, so it failed, local token failed. Um, so how do I log in? Is there like a login I can do? Can I just run search? There we go. And I might have broken it just now. Um, dev news. Yes, <laughs> it just broke it. Um, if I run npm run deploy again, and keep in mind, like if I look at the readme right now, um, is there anything about deployment? No, nothing about deployment in the readme. So that's nice. But thankfully, I had that package JSON script. All right, we're live. We're back live, and product hunt is good. Hacker news is good, and we got GitHub trending repositories back on Dev News. That's about it. I hope this was enjoyable. This is the first devlog, so a very simple update. But I'm definitely going to making future devlog videos. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.